There's no doubt that Bill Clinton uh, had faith in her and consulted with her on issues in the same way that I would consult with Michelle uh, if there were issues. On the other hand, I don't think Michelle would claim that uh, she is uh, the best qualified person to be a United States Senator by virtue of me talking to her on occasion about the work that I've done. I think Obama's attack on her is on this experience on the First Lady issue is a clever one because he compares her with Madeleine Albright. Now, Madeleine Albright is a person who achieved her stature on her own. And everything by implying that, the, uh, that Hillary's uh, experience, so-called, is all derivative from her marriage, he's attacking her feminism. Now, that's a subtext. Obviously, he's, he's, he's not going to attack her directly and say it. Senator Clinton, it will go to you. It speaks to electability. Earlier this month, Republican presidential frontrunner Rudolph Giuliani said this about you, quote, I don't know Hillary's experience. She's never run a city. She's never run a state. She's never run a business. She's never met a payroll. She's never been responsible for the safety and security of millions of people, much less even hundreds of people. So I'm trying to figure out where the experience is here. End of quote. Senator Hutter, how do you respond to the former mayor of New York? In my experience of 35 years uh, as an advocate for children and families, as a citizen activist, uh, as someone who helped to bring educational reform and health care reform to Arkansas, bringing the Children's Health Insurance Program to fruition during the years in the White House, my time in the Senate. She wants her past respected but not inspected. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it pretty much well, captures it, doesn't it? Well, do you remember the, the character Walter Mitty? Yep. Uh, he was a, a, fan, a fat character who would always fantasize that he was a great diplomat or a great economist. And that's really what, what Hillary Clinton is doing. She, she imagines, for example, that she was intimately involved in the Irish peace process. You read Adams' memoir, you read Mitchell's stuff, you read Clinton's memoir, Bill Clinton's, you read Hillary's memoir. And she doesn't talk about that. She's trying to, like Forrest Gump, she's trying to sort of always be there. And it's, it's fraudulent. She wasn't. Uh, she was a largely ceremonial first lady <coughs> after the first two years in office. And most of her foreign trips, she rode elephants and went ice skating and visited children's centers. Well, well, she didn't negotiate well, policy. Let me, let me ask that. Well, that's the point. And, and her record is not open for inspection, either being the first lady of Arkansas uh, or the first lady of the United States. And, and I thought Karl Rove had a good point in an article that he wrote today is Barack should have turned to her, looked at her and said, you have the ability to turn over these documents right now and challenge right. her to do it. Well, now, Hillary yeah. must sense she, she's in trouble because she's well, even digging up dirt on, on Barack Obama's kindergarten years. Yeah, that was so crazy. Let's put up their press release number three. In third grade, Senator Obama wrote an essay titled, I Want to Be President. In kindergarten, Senator Obama wrote an essay titled, I Want to Become a President. I mean, isn't this in political insanity? I think we all wanted to be president in kindergarten, Dan. <laughs> uh, this is political insanity. It is disastrous. This is the Clinton campaign staff officially pressing the panic button. Could you imagine Margaret Thatcher? saying that Gorbachev and the Russians were piling on because she's a woman? Yeah, no, I can't. C could you imagine that? I mean, th this is what Hillary always does. Whenever she gets under fire, she retreats behind the apron strings. The other thing oh, that Hillary. strikes me is that a woman has to make herself a victim to be popular, and I find that really troubling. All right, let's she's uh, more popular when she's a victim. Well, uh, they, have, they have a couple of pushes they're doing right now. One is to humanize her. This is a very important thing. They're doing it through the Sopranos ad, through the video, through everything. And the other is women. I mean, they've made a serious decision that they need to be the dominating force in the women's vote to win this election. Hillary's Commander-in-Chief Problem By Mia T, October 2, 2005 It isn't that they can't see the solution. It is that they can't see the problem. G.K. Chesterton While America appears not to be ready for a female president under any circumstances, 
the post 9-11 realities pose special problems for a female presidential candidate. Add to these the problems unique to Mrs. Clinton. The reviews make the mistake of focusing on the problems of the generic female presidential candidate running during ordinary times. These are not ordinary times. America is waging the global war on terror. The uncharted territory of asymmetric netherworlds is the battlefield. The enemy is brutal, subhuman. The threat of global conflagration is real. Defeating the enemy isn't sufficient. For America to prevail, she must also defeat a retrograde, misogynist mindset. To successfully prosecute the war on terror, it is essential that the collective patriarchal Islamic culture perceives America as politically and militarily strong. This requirement presents an insurmountable hurdle for any female presidential candidate, and especially Mrs. Clinton, historically anti-military, an image, incidentally, that is only enhanced today by her clumsy, term again parody of Thatcher, forever the pitiful victim, and, according to Dick Morris, quote, the biggest of in the Clinton administration, close quote. It is ironic that had the Clintons not failed utterly to fight terrorism, not failed to take bin Laden from Sudan, not failed repeatedly to decapitate a nascent, still stoppable Al-Qaeda. The generic female president as a construct would still be viable. Mrs. Clinton's obstacles would be limited largely to standard issue Clintonisms, corruption, abuse, malpractice, malfeasance, megalomania, rape and treason. And, in spite of Winita Brodrick, or perhaps because of her, Rod Lurie would be reduced to perversely hawking the first gentleman instead of the commander-in-chief.